This selection technique is probably one of my favorites. I'll just go ahead and jump into edit mode here and you'll see if I press L over the mesh, I get the whole thing and don't really want that. So I'll just go into edge select here and I wanna grab an edge that goes around. So initially you might have just a couple of things here to select. So it's not a ton of work, but 3D modeling is what it is. I'm gonna press Control E and I wanna go ahead and mark this as a seam. Now let the magic begin go ahead and press L over that and now you've got that selection. Now I press L over here, that's a separate selection. Now for my special mirror machine tool, Shift Alt Q if you guys have that, left click to place it and now I've got the seam over here so I can just press L there, I can press L here clear that and press L here. This is a quick and really easy and effective way to kind of separate your mesh. If you guys are interested in the mirror machine, I'll put a link in the comments. Now in edit mode, hover your mouse just over an edge going horizontally, shift, alt, and click. You've got this as a selection. Now you can go into select and do a checker deselect and go ahead then and do an extrude faces along nominals and get some really cool varying results there. Also, you can do the same thing here with shift alt on the vertical. You can select a few different ways like that. Maybe do something similar. Now this would be very helpful. And don't forget, you can always press F9 to bring up the last thing that you did. So if you're not done or you didn't like what you had, you can still change it before the next operation. Now, while I've still got that selected, you can actually go in here and hit H to hide that selection. Alt H will bring it back. You can press P and separate that selection. Jump back in the object, grab this, do something cool like put glass on that. And I'll show you that real quick. You can just go ahead and shade that smooth. Go to the materials, click new, go down. And if you haven't installed in the edit preferences, the material library, you can grab that and we'll get something like the basic glass and apply that to selected. Let's jump over to EV Engine and boom, you've got glass. Now this next one is not very well known, I think. I've not seen too many tutorials on it. What you can do is you've got a mesh like this and if I want to extrude, I end up with these overlapping faces. Instead, I want to select the area manifold. So how do we do this? We can go ahead with this face selected and press Alt-E and select extrude manifold. It's just another way of selecting what you actually want to do instead of letting the mesh dictate it. I've got one I know you guys are gonna love. If you're in a particular view and you don't wanna have to say, hit seven, do a top view. Let me grab this and then do all these little measurements and maybe get the selection, maybe not. Now I've got this selected because I wanted to do something like maybe extrude it down because I'm making a pool or whatever. Well, you don't really have to do that. You can stay in view. Let's grab this one corner we want, hold control shift, and then we'll select the other corner. This is automatically gonna turn on fill region. If you don't have fill region on, it's gonna be the shortest path or you can do face stepping and there's other selection techniques, but the fill region is the one that works best for me. Now here's another way you can do selections in Blender. If you were to jump into edit mode and you have these faces selected, you could select a material like this orange and click assign. You can click this one with this green material and assign it and I just went ahead and added a few of these material containers to the same object, which is all you would have to do. So now I'll come over here. I want to select these three. I'll press Q and grab invert. Then I want to grab this material and go ahead and assign it. And I come back out Then I've got something like this. Now the next one I actually covered in my short, but I'm going to cover it here as well. I'm just going to select one of these, hit A for all. You may have to double tap I to get this type of an inset. Then I'm just going to extrude that up a little bit. I like that. Now I want to go ahead and select, say I don't have these selected. I want to go ahead and jump into vertex mode. I want to grab the vert that is on the side I want to grab. Now this can work in a number of ways. So let's go select side of active. Now it can work like this and you'll actually get the side of the active depending on the operator. So this is on position X. So as you can see, this is grabbing what I would believe is the X positive and the X negative could be wrong, doesn't matter, but you can select the Z and this will actually give you back the top selection. And of course, if you switch this to the Y axis, then you'll get all of it. And then you can change the selection here with the threshold. 
So now if I want to select the bottom, I'll select this one. Now back up to our selection menu. You can right click on this and add this to the Q favorites as well. So now I press Q, I've got side of active. Now I can select the entire bottom here and if this was what I wanted to uh, have selected, then this would work great. Now, of course, you can come back over here. You can switch the axis mode. You can go from negative to positive. You can switch the axis. I'll go back to negative, and then if you play with the threshold, you will increase or decrease that selection. So this is going to be probably one of your most powerful operators and very easy to use. Now for the next selection, I'm going to go in and actually turn on cavity just so we can see this a little better. This will kind of remove the depth perception illusion and give you a better look. I'm going to tab over into face select and if I grab these two faces right here, it's not going to be enough data in Blender when I go ahead and press shift G and I want to do the selection by normals, it's only going to grab those faces. So let's fix our selection and instead of trying to grab all of these and shift around thresholds and weird stuff. I'm just going to grab those normals and I'll press shift G. This is another hotkey menu for you and grab normals. So now I've got all of these faces and maybe I wanted to do an inset on all of these as well. And then I can extrude all of these along normals and bring it in. And that perhaps is a little too far. So I'll hold shift and then I'll place uh, click to place that. So now I've got a unique setting or rather a unique modification to all of these mesh objects. Well, it's one object, but you know what I mean, all of these faces at one time, which would be insanely difficult to do. For the next one, let's just drop in a UV sphere. Let's jump into face select. You can just select one or select nothing. Press space bar, type in random, and you'll see select random. You can add that to the Q favorites like I did too. So I'm going to go ahead and select random. And this gives you a nice randomized selection. And if we come down here, well, guess what? We've got a ratio. We've also got a seed amount. And then you can do action of select or deselect. And I don't see the actual purpose of having a random. Let's see. We'll hit A for all. And I'll do that again. Yeah, that's going to be a random deselect now. So that's cool. And you can do it like that. I've actually not used a random deselect, just don't need it, but now you know it's there. Now for the next one, let's jump over into edit and go into vertex mode. Also, you can tab over into vertex mode here. I'm press seven for the top view. I wanna grab this one. And if I hold down control and I use number pad plus, I can actually increase and then use the minus to decrease said selection. This is very useful for things like flattening tops. So I could hit scale Z and as you see, this will now give me different shapes and I can just hit zero, enter. And now I could jump into face select and hit F to fill that face and maybe give that a nice slight bevel or something and then go back. And I'm a, I'm a bit of an auto smooth freak. I love using it. I think it's extremely useful. And then we can turn off cavity to get a slightly better look at that. And then we made a decent little pot shaped object where we could do this, extrude this down. We could add some loop cuts in here. And don't shoot me for how I do this, but I'm just going to add a couple, something like that. Then we can do a nice sub D modifier on this, and I'll generate the that. Ooh, I got the old school menu here. I got confused for a second. And we can run a sub D on that. Of course, for certain things, we'll have to uh, turn off the sub D. Excuse me. There we go. Turn that off and maybe add in a little extra geo to give it some support, something like that, that we could turn the sub D back on, and that looks nice. Now we've got 